Hey, is this Alexander's girlfriend? Is Barbara speaking? Sorry? Who is this? I don't have your number in my phone. Your number isn't saved in my phone. So I'm not sure if we've actually exchanged contact info before. Actually, no, we've never met. Someone gave me your number and so I'm contacting you. Someone gave you my number? Who? The guy you think is your boyfriend, Alexander. Wait, hold on a sec. Alexander, I'm a bit confused here. What do you mean by who I think is my boyfriend? How do you know Alexander and what do you want from me? Well, no need to beat around the bush. I'll be straightforward with you. I'm actually Alexander's girlfriend. Wait a sec. What? Alexander's my fiance. Oh, I see. Yeah, I'm aware of that. I heard about your upcoming small wedding in two weeks. But here's the thing. I'm actually Alexander's real girlfriend. I have no idea what you're talking about. Well, I thought you were some super smart chick. Aren't you a lawyer or something? Surprised at how slow you are on the uptake, huh? Wow, I had no idea you were this clueless. Let me break it down for you. Alexander has been with me all along. He's been cheating on you. What? Are you saying this for real? Is this some kind of joke? You know, I've always been his true love, you know? However, he's been dedicatedly pursuing a career in law for quite some time now. It's been more than 10 years of repeatedly taking the bar exam. But you know what? This year, our prayers have finally been answered by a higher power. I'm not sure it has much to do with that. It's because Alexander studied super hard over the past 10 years. Well, let's not forget that you've been playing the fool by supporting him financially all this time. You've basically been our sugar mama. <laughs> our sugar mama? Just so you're aware, you've been footing the bill for all our dates. Can you believe it? I'm at a loss for words. I've been having an absolute blast, all thanks to your generous wallet. What are you talking about? Alexander and I have known each other since we were kids, you know. We attended the same school and started dating when we were in our sophomore year of high school. Wait, so you're his ex-girlfriend? You won't believe this, but his parents are lawyers as well. He followed in their footsteps and went to law school too. But here's the funny part. I've been stringing him along all this time. <laughs> I had this plan in mind that if he actually made it as a lawyer, I could marry him. But hey, just in case I found a doctor before that, I thought, why not marry the doctor instead? A girl's got to keep her options open, you know what I mean? Okay, so because he passed the bar and he is a lawyer now, that's why you're messaging me? Okay then. We're finally on the same wavelength, hon. Let me tell you, keeping him on the hook for the whole decade wasn't a walk in the park, honey. I had to juggle dating other guys on the side, you know, as a backup plan. But man, the title of lawyer just sounds so darn good. Trust me, finding a guy better than a lawyer ain't no easy task. And right when my biological clock started ticking loudly, get this, Alexander freaking aced his bar exam. Can you imagine how happy I was to hear that? So for 10 years, he's been with you behind my back. Great. We've finally reached an understanding, it seems. Now it's time for you to stick to your own lane. He's made it clear that he wants me, not you. Um, wait a second. Is Alexander there with you? Of course he is. He's my man and we're gonna go get our marriage license now. So see you later. I prefer to speak with Alexander first before I take your word on anything. Over my dead body? Over your dead body? There's absolutely no chance you'll be seeing or talking to him, period. He's mine, honey, and he wants absolutely nothing to do with you. I'm the one breaking this news to you, just so you get it straight. Oh, and by the way, thanks for all the support and playing the role of a sugar mama until now. Thanks to your contributions, he's become a thriving lawyer. So we're good without you and your money from now on. I'm just messaging to say thanks, mama. See ya, wouldn't want to meet ya. Don't you dare just leave me hanging. You messaged me, remember? Let's talk. Barbara? Amy, is $1,000 enough? Enough for what? I'm not sure what you're talking about. The cost for you to walk away from my son. You know Alexander's father's a lawyer, and we have our own law firm, so we know how this works. You're asking me to just walk away? Did you know about this all along? Barbara was Alexander's girlfriend back in the day, so we knew her very well. 
We've always been rooting for them. This is a joke, right? We're getting married in two weeks. Everything is set and in place. It's a small wedding with only family, so there shouldn't be an issue canceling it. What about me? What about how I feel or what I want? I really don't give a crap about that. All I want is for Alexander to be happy. That's all I care about. And you rubbed me the wrong way from the very beginning. You became a lawyer way before he did, and you started working and rubbing it in his face every day. You even tried to give us advice on how to run our business as if we were incompetent or something. No, that's not what I was trying to do. No point in trying to explain yourself, you won't win. I did try to talk to you guys about your firm, but it was all in your best interest for the future, for Alexander as well. In our best interest, my husband became a lawyer and started his firm years ago. He's had a hundred times the experience of you as a lawyer and a business owner. Anyway, that's beside the point. A thousand dollars should do it, right? A thousand dollars? The ten years I invested in this relationship? You think it's only worth a thousand dollars? Wow, you're going there? It's your own fault Alexander didn't choose you. You should be grateful we're even giving you anything. For the past 10 years, I've been supporting him. Every time he failed the bar exam and every time he felt like he just hit rock bottom, I was the one supporting him emotionally and financially. You understand that, right? And in return, you want him to marry you? Are you kidding me? No one said he had to marry me. He was the one that kept saying he wanted to get married once he passed the bar and became a lawyer. And I believed in him. So I supported him all these years. You mean you thought once he became a lawyer, he'd take over the family business? That's why you hung on to him all these years and wanted him to marry you? What in the world are you talking about? Alexander was saying this, not me. He felt bad because you supported him financially for so long, so he couldn't not propose to you. I guess he felt bad. He's kind like that, you know? But he said he really does love someone else and that he always has. He says that it stresses him out thinking that he needs to marry you. I don't believe he said that. I never forced him into anything. A lawyer with his very own firm. There's not a single woman out there that wouldn't want to marry him. His future is set, nothing to worry about. You're probably just one of those gold diggers too. Of course not. Unlike you, Barbara's honest, and she's so considerate, thinking about us all the time, planning vacations for us. She's nothing like a gold digger that only has her eyes on our money. She really only cares about the family and our future as a family. You never once took us on vacation with you. What are you talking about a vacation? I've worked my butt off these past 10 years supporting Alexander as much as I could. I'm not going to make excuses because I was working like crazy, but that was all so Alexander could study and become a lawyer without worrying about anything else but passing the bar. I even saved money for our future by cutting down on my own expenses. You know what? I really don't care. Because the reality is that my husband and I have met and seen all kinds of people. I think we could tell who's best for our son. And based on what we see, Barbara's the best person for our son. So you need to just let him go. Are you crazy? It goes without saying, but if you ever come near our son again, there will be legal consequences for you. So get it through your head, we never want to see you again. And of course, that also goes for Barbara. So don't ever go near her. I have nothing else to say to you, but just be grateful that you were even with Alexander for this long. Guess what? It's such a special day today. Alexander and I got married. We still need to have a ceremony for all the friends and family, but we just couldn't wait that long to tie the knot. I'm now the wife of a successful lawyer and owner of a law firm. I heard you moved somewhere. I think my mother-in-law already gave you an earful, but just as a reminder, don't ever come near Alexander and I, because if you do, we'll get a restraining order against you. Do you know what day it is today? And is that why you got married today? I have no idea what you're talking about. What's today? It's the new moon today, if that's what you mean. Oh, yeah. Actually, you know what? Someone I know is supposed to get married today, but I can't remember who. Oh, wait, I totally remember. You were going to get married today. Are you kidding me? You know what? I really don't even care anymore. Oh, I feel so bad for you. It's terrible that you had to cancel the wedding. You must be so sad. I really wanted to talk to Alexander about this, but I haven't been able to get in touch with him or his parents. Can you tell him that I've been wanting to speak with them? I told you already. Stay away from us. 
We canceled the wedding, so there's a cancellation fee. He's the one that called off the wedding, so it's his responsibility. He should pay for everything, not me. We gave you money already. Are you talking about the thousand dollars? Yeah, of course. We gave you plenty of money, so that should make us even. Don't tell me you're asking for more. Talk about being greedy. I never agreed on a thousand dollars. As far as I know, there's no a thousand dollars. I certainly haven't received any money. And even if I did, this cancellation fee is a completely separate issue. I told you that we already got married, didn't I? And we still have a big wedding to plan because we've only done the paperwork so far. And there's the honeymoon to sort out. We also need to build a new house. We're going to need so much money. So we don't have any more money to waste on you, honey. So don't even joke about needing more money. Waste on me? We had to cancel the wedding at the last minute because of you two. Of course you should be responsible for the cancellation fees. You're just angry because you're well past your 30s. Tick tock, tick tock. And you got dumped by your fiance. Self pity much? Yeah, he's rich and successful, but you are beyond greedy. You guys strung me along on purpose for 10 years. Isn't that right? You made me support you guys financially and do the hard work while you guys did nothing. Well, you're one of the saddest people I've ever met. Is that it? We're busy because we need to go see some wedding venues. It's going to be tough finding another man at your age. But good luck anyway. I'll be living my happily ever after with Alexander over here. So that's just it then. Okay, I got it. You guys have zero intention of even apologizing for what you did. Apologize? For what? I have a lot of gratitude though. You literally made him into the lawyer that he is today. I'm so thankful because you patiently supported him all these years. So thank you, honey. Okay, I hear you loud and clear. We finally found our venue. It's a little pricey, but we have the money since we saved the money on your wedding with Alexander. And because you were paying for pretty much everything over the past 10 years, we were also able to save quite a lot and plan something super extravagant. It's the perfect setting for such a prestigious family. Thank you for your support all these years. You also have a million dollars of debt. What? A million dollar debt? Have you lost your mind? I guess you haven't heard. What are you talking about? Well, you're married now, so you should probably figure it out soon. But anyway, good luck paying it off. What the heck are you talking about? Wait, you didn't know? The family law firm he took over from his parents? It was always in dire financial straits. But his parents were all highbrow and all, you know? So they'd just been pretending everything was just fine. They were living beyond their means to keep up with their appearances even if that meant going into heavy debt. And I'm pretty sure not all of those loans came from your typical banks, if you know what I mean. So God only knows what those interest rates look like. I have no idea what you're talking about. No one's ever told me that. There's no way this is true. They're lawyers. You're so sad lying to get back at me for taking your fiance away. Well, go ask them yourself then. And you should know that not all lawyers make money. Alexander told me that you were making so much money as a lawyer. Well, I work for a major firm representing massive corporations. So there are lawyers like me. And then there are lawyers who open their small firms but make hardly any business. There are a lot of lawyers who just don't have what they need in terms of skills, finances, or connections. There's no way Alexander's dad isn't successful. He works with the White House. The White House? What are you talking about? Alexander said his dad works with the state, which means he works for the White House. No, Alexander told me that. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Do you mean he was chosen by the state? Meaning a state appointed attorney? You know, the state. The United States government appointed him as their attorney. I can't believe you're that dumb. The fact that you have no idea what a state appointed attorney is. You're a real piece of work. The state appointed attorney is the same as a court appointed attorney or a public defender. They defend people that don't have enough money to afford an attorney. So the state appoints one, you get me? They're lawyers though. Yeah, but they don't make much money, not like corporate law. And they're anything but special. You're such a liar. And to top all of that, 
Get this, your father-in-law even got fired from being a state-appointed attorney. He was defending some criminal, and even he didn't want him because he had zero skills. Are you calling my father-in-law useless? As a lawyer myself, it's a bit embarrassing to be associated with him. Let's just say his performance in court leaves a lot to be desired. And really? Even a monkey can do what he does outside of court. Because he doesn't really do much at all as far as anyone can tell. I don't even think he's up to date with all the changes in the law. To be honest, a bit stone age when it comes to the law. How can someone like that even become a lawyer or own his own law firm? Someone can just open up a firm, but to make the firm successful is a whole other story. So are you being serious about the million dollar debt the firm has? And Alexander knew about this the entire time? Of course he did. That's why he never asked his parents for money while he took the bar exam and had me support him instead. And he hid this from me the whole time? Do you want to know the real reason why his parents wanted him to marry you over me? The real reason? It's because I was better suited for him. And they liked me better than you. They wanted someone who didn't know anything about the law. Someone who was dumb enough not to know anything so they could just pass their debt on. Are you kidding me? Yeah. They mentioned this yesterday when I spoke with them. You spoke with them yesterday? Don't get me wrong. I only spoke with Alexander and his mom as a lawyer. I told them I was suing Alexander for the wedding cancellation fees. Oh yeah, and for the living expenses I incurred over the last 10 years. What? Can you even do that? I never heard of that. Well, as we've determined, you don't know anything about the law. You didn't even know what a state-appointed attorney was. Anyway, Alexander lied to me all these years just to use me for my money. Do you know how stupid I felt after all of this? He strung me along and even got on one knee and asked me to marry him, knowing he didn't want to. I've been building my case to sue him for fraud and that's exactly what I was talking to them about yesterday. So Alexander is going to be in debt too? Remember you said that I was paying for all your dates for the past 10 years? And that because of that you were able to save money? I'm also assuming that I most likely paid for your trips with his parents too. You basically told me that you have money. So I'm suing you guys for all the money you spent on dates, etc. With my money. Are you kidding me? We just got married. You can't take our money. We need it. You understand that people need to take responsibility for things they've done, right? I'll divorce him. So please, just leave me out of it. You can have him back. No, thank you. You think I'd forgiven him and just take him back after everything he did to me for the past 10 years? It's like you said, I guess. This was all me supporting him so he can become a lawyer. But I realize now, I think I just pitied him, and it became some sort of fun game for me to make him reach that goal. Like raising a pet, or playing SimCity. I did this for 10 years. Supported him. It was because you loved him, wasn't it? After 10 years, you don't even know why. I guess you can call this codependency. But now I'm free, and wow, does it feel good. All I want now is to finally get rid of him and his energy for my life. That's all I can think about. So thank you for taking him in. He's all yours now. I don't want him. I don't want a man in debt. He's a lawyer though. There's still a chance he can make money, you know. Really? You think so? Well, if you're asking for my opinion and if he has the brains, from my perspective, and you know, I've worked with so many Fortune 500 CEOs. If I have to give my own opinion, my answer would be, not the slightest chance in hell. He barely passed the bar exam, and he's a little slow in the head, you know? Physically and mentally, he's just not powerful. That's not fair. And besides, who in their right mind would be able to trust a fraud like him? I don't know what to do anymore. I don't want to be married to a guy who has tons of debt. Well, that's for you to hash out with him. I have nothing to do with that part of the conversation. I know good family lawyers who can help you with your divorce. They're quite expensive though. I don't have that kind of money. Let's get back to the main subject though and talk about me suing you guys. 
I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry for everything I've done. I'll break up with him and have nothing to do with him. So please, please, just help me. You're a great lawyer, right? Amy, please, I'm begging you. Please, represent me. When everything settled down, it turned out that Alexander had a lot to repay me. He had to cover the cancellation fee for the venue, along with 10 years worth of living expenses, all the dates we went on, and even the trips we took with his parents. The total debt he accumulated was staggering, surpassing my annual salary by a wide margin. And let me tell you, I make a pretty penny. On top of being burdened with personal debt, Alexander lacks the necessary skills to revive his parents' failing law firm. To make matters worse, Barbara, his mother, proved to be utterly unhelpful in this predicament. The weight of their financial obligations forced them to ultimately shut down their firm. Despite holding a valid law license, I recently heard through the grapevine that Alexander is now working part-time at a supermarket. Without me shouldering the financial burden anymore, and with considerable debt to tackle, Barbara ended up draining her own savings in an attempt to keep her head above water. It seems she's resorted to hiring a lawyer and is currently going through the process of getting a divorce. The aftermath of our situation has been nothing short of challenging for Alexander and Barbara. The debts they accrued, combined with the closure of their firm, have taken a significant toll on their lives. It serves as a stark reminder that financial decisions and the strain they place on relationships are not to be taken lightly.